Hey guys, so in this video we're going to look into how pressure works if you have an object that is surrounded by air as opposed to if you have an object surrounded by a liquid such as water. Let's check it out. All right, so imagine that you are next to the ocean, okay? So you're next, next to the ocean, and if you're next to the ocean, remember that the pressure of the air molecules around you, let's make air molecules green, the pressure that the air is going to exert on you at this level next to the ocean is going to be 1 atm which is the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level okay so if you're out in the open you have air molecules around you and that's what happens now as you go up in height as you go up in height the pressure will change and the easiest way i think to 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 um, to remember what happens to the air pressure, whether it increases or decreases, is just to think that if you go up in air, there's going to be less air above you. So if you are here, you can imagine there's a column of air molecules um, on top of you. But if you're here, there's a smaller column of air molecules on top of you. So because there's less air on top of you, the air pressure will be lower. It will decrease. Okay, remember air pressure, um, air pressure decreases. Air pressure comes from the weight of air molecules on top of you. So if there's less air on top of you, there's less of a weight. So the air pressure decreases, okay, because there's less weight pushing down on you. Now the air density, the air density is going to in, um, is going to decrease as well. And number two follows from number one. So here you have a ton of air molecules on top of you and the air molecules up here push down against the air molecules down here. So the air molecules down here are more squished together because there's all this weight on top of them, okay? So you can think that this is, this is low density and this is higher density of molecules, okay? The molecules are more spread out up there because they're not being squished by the weight of the molecules on top of them. So if you just remember that, um, I think if you think about it in terms of what's on top of you, um, you don't even have to memorize that as you go up in height, your P air goes down and then your rho goes down as well as you go up in height. Okay. Now, here's what's even more important for you to remember is that the density of air is very low as it is. So both of these changes are very insignificant. In fact, most of the time we're going to ignore changes in pressure and density of air. Okay, so this first example deals with that. Which of the following is the best approximation for the atmospheric pressure, P air, at 100 meters above sea level. So remember, changes are only significant over large distances, and I should say for very, very large distances, such as how high an airplane is flying. So 100 meters is not a very large distance, uh, even though it'd be pretty tall, um, but it's not significant. Therefore, the answer is that the atmospheric pressure here is basically gonna be the same as it is at sea level, okay? So it's the same because there's very little difference. It's approximately the same. Cool, so if you're not sure which, at which pressure to use, you should be using one ATM, which of course is this number right here. It's 1.01. .01. I made 1.00 just because I was rounding. Um, and if they don't tell you, um, you can use that number. Cool, so it's a little bit different if you have liquids, however. So if, if you were an object or under a liquid, submerged in a liquid, um, the pressure differences will be much more pronounced. They're going to be much bigger different uh, dis differences in pressure, even for a little bit of a distance, because liquids have much higher density than air. Okay. So, but now in air we moved up, and our pressure changed. But if you are in water, you're going to move down. Okay. So here the pressure depends on your height, and here it depends on your depth, okay? Now, we just used H for both of those, um, but the idea is that the pressure will increase as you go down here. And everyone knows that if you start swimming, uh, if you start going underwater, 
and the deeper you go, your ears start to feel a lot of pressure, and that's because the water pressure increases as you go down in height or depth, okay? It increases. And it increases because there's more liquid above you. So before, if you went up, it would go down because there's less air. Now, if you go down, the pressure will go up because there's more stuff on top of you. There's more liquid on top of you, so there's more weight pushing down. It's the same logic as before. The difference here is that changes are significant even for small distances, right? And if you're swimming and you just go a little bit lower underwater, you can tell those differences are pretty significant. Water density does not change much, so we're always going to assume that water dis uh, density is constant because the changes are very insignificant even for very large distances. So you can pretty much assume, you could even assume that I never even mentioned this and just pretend that water density is always the same, always. Cool? And then the last point here is that the pressure in the liquid, um, such as water, but it really in any liquid, depends on this equation or it can be calculated according to this equation. So this is a very important equation and it tells us that the pressure at the bottom of a column, so let's draw a little beaker here and let's say we have, um, let's say we have some liquid and there are two lines that are important here, the, the highest point here, okay, and the lowest point of the liquid here. So the pressure at the bottom, right here, pressure at the bottom, is going to be equal to the pressure at the top, which is this, plus rho, this is density of the liquid, g, gravity, and h, h, which is the height difference um, between these two, or the depth of the liquid, okay? So I can calculate the pressure at the bottom if I know the pressure at the top, and if I know the H, okay? We're gonna use this equation quite a bit. Now, you should know that the pressure at the bottom is called the absolute pressure. The pressure at the top is called the relative pressure. And the pressure difference between these two is called the gauge pressure, okay? Gauge pressure is the difference between the two pressures, how much greater one is than the other. And the idea is that this pressure here is relative to the top pressure. The pressure at the bottom depends on the pressure at the top. That's why this one's called relative. So sometimes you see questions that will throw these terms at you, so you should know what they are. Let's do an example real quick, and then we'll be done with this. So it says, suppose you are 1.8 meters tall, and your heart's located 1.4 meters from your feet. So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a person here, pretty big. Um, so that we can do this and your heart let's say is over here and your total height is 1.8 meters and your heart is 1.4 meters away from your feet so it follows that your if this is 1.4 and this is 1.8 this gap here heart to top of your head must be the difference between those two which is 0 0.4 meters so that's you um, it says the blood pressure near your heart is 1.3. So right here, the pressure at your heart is going to be um, is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the fourth Pascal. And we want to know the uh, we want to calculate the blood pressure at the top of your head. So we want to know the blood pressure here, pressure of head, and we want to know the pressure at the bottom of your feet, pressure feet. And guess what? We're going to use this equation highlighted in green right here to figure this out one at a time. So the first one we want to know what is the pressure of your head. Okay, blood pressure of your head. This here, by the way, is the density of blood. So I'm going to write here that rho blood is 1060. And we're going to use that number. All right, so check this out. We know this here. This is our known, and these are our unknowns. So for both of these questions, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna set up an equation with a known pressure and an unknown pressure. And if you look at this known pressure and this unknown pressure, we know, we know this distance right here, which means we can set up an equation between these two guys. So if you set up an equation between these two guys, it's always gonna be that P bottom equals 
ptop plus rho gh. And the h is the gap between them, which is 0 0.4. So I know p bottom. I'm looking for p top. And this is just because this is at the bottom. This is at the top. It's that simple, right? This is the guy at the bottom. That's at the top. So I know uh, I want p top. I know the density, 1060. I know gravity. We're going to use 10. Um, actually, for gravity, we're going to use 9.8 because I want to be more accurate since we're dealing with the human body here. Um, and h, h is going to be the distance between top and bottom. So this is very important. h is the distance between top and bottom, which in this case is 0 0.4. So let's set this up. Um, I can write that p bottom is 1.3 times 10 to the fourth equals p top, which is what we want, plus rho. 1060, gravity 9.8, h 0 0.4. For the sake of time, I'm not including units here, but all the units are standard, which means my pressure will have standard units at the end, Pascal. So if I move this around, you end up with p top equals 1.3 times 10 to the fourth minus, right, this goes to the other side, minus, and I have it here, um, 1060, 9.8, 0 0.4. And this is going to, I'm rounding here, 8800PA. So let me write this here. This went from 1.3 times 10 to the fourth. If I want to rewrite this with a 10 to the fourth, I'm going to do this kind of quickly, but it would look like this. 0 0.088 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, you can validate that if you would like. Let me get out of the way. All right, and I want to do that so that we can write all of these answers with a power of four. Let's do part B. So for part B, we want to know what is the pressure um, of blood or blood pressure on your feet. So again, we're going to set up an equation. P bottom equals P top plus rho G H. But now we are talking about this interval here. Okay, so this green height was this height right here, but now the blue height has to do with this height right here. And perhaps obviously this is, and now for this equation, bottom is the feet and top is the heart. Okay, just to be very careful here, when I did this, the bottom was the heart and the top was the head but this is all sort of relative, right? So now that I'm writing another equation for a different interval for this height here, bottom and top change, okay? So be careful there. And we are looking for P bottom, whereas before we were looking for P top, okay? Be careful, if you're careful, it's gonna be easy. So let me write this over here. P bottom, P top is the heart, so 1.3 times 10 to the fourth plus rho 1060 gravity 9.8 and h is 1.4 1.4 meters all the units are standard so i'm going to get the answer in pascal and if you do all of this you get 27500 27500 um, or if you want to write it in terms of a power of 10 to the fourth right um, you can write this as 2.75 times 10 to the fourth Pascal, okay? 275, 10 to the fourth Pascal. Let me get out of the way. And the last thing I'm gonna do is put it over here that this is 2.75 times 10 to the fourth Pascal. So I wanna quickly show you these answers. This is 0.8, this is 1.3, and this is 2.75. And the important point to make here is that as you go down, you have more and more pressure. And that's what you should have because at the bottom of your feet, you have all the weight of the blood and your entire body pushing down on you. So the lowest blood pressure should be all the way at the top. The, um, and then the highest blood pressure should be all the way at the bottom. Um, now, this is a little bit simplistic. The human body is a little more complicated than that, but this is good enough for physics approximations. The last, last point I'm going to make here is that this equation actually technically works for air pressure, but we're not going to use it be most of the time uh, because most of the time we're just going to ignore changes in air pressure. Okay? So if I tell you 
that you are on top of a building that's 100 meters tall, you're not going to calculate the pressure up there um, because it's not going to be very different from atmospheric pressure. You can try it and, and you'll see that it's a very small difference. So we, we tend to think of this equation as an equation for pressure in liquids, even though it would work for air, it's just that air pressure changes are very, very subtle um, over small distances. Cool, that's it for this one. Let's keep rolling.